Good morning and uh, welcome. Today it's my pleasure to speak with Astrid Heibel, who's head of process engineering at Zeta. Uh, I'd just like to give a quick background introduction from my perspective before we begin. I first met Astrid in 2014 or 15 when she came to India for a proposal discussion. And uh, at that point, I was not a part of Zeta, so it was very interesting for me to see how the company functions and operates. And it was an insight into uh, the philosophy of the company. And what struck me at that point, uh, and it's a, an, an opinion I still hold, is uh, the depth of her expertise and the command she had and continues to have over her field. So with that, Astrid, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sushan. It's great to see you again. So uh, you've brought something for us today. Can we have a look at what it is? So, I brought with me this old balance. And I've chosen this piece um, for several reasons. Number one is my educational background. I studied technical chemistry and everything that is linked to working in a lab, making experiments, inventing something new um, was always fascinating for me. The second thing is I like old design. So this balance um, is still fulfilling its function, but on the same, uh, it's a nice piece of decoration. And then there are also some, let's say, more um, philosophical reasons why I've chosen this um, object. Number one is um, for me personally, but also for my team, um, it is very important to take care of the work-life balance. And we keep, uh, we need to keep a good mixture beca uh, between working hard and having fun. And um, the last reason why I've chosen this object is also um, the balance between growth and innovation versus stabilization. So that was a, a very, uh, very insightful answer, I would say. And what I see just as a balance uh, for you represents something a lot more. Uh, you also mentioned the utility, and in fact, uh, something like this is still used uh, in India for for weighing vegetables. So you know it still has a, a purpose. Uh, you touched upon innovation. I'd like to to pick on that point. And can you talk about your experience with innovation at Zeta? Um, so I joined Zeta in 2008, so 13 years ago, right after university, as a process engineer. Um, in 2012, I became head of um, and location manager in Vienna. And when I started, we were around about 20 people in our office. Mm, I think less than 10 of them process engineers. And now we are more than 50 people in my department located all over the world. And behind this development, um, we have several yeah, changes um, uh, covered. For example, um, the foundation of new offices around the world. Usually it's always process engineering that needs to be part of the first employees. Um, then we have innovation or change in terms of the size of our projects. Size linked um, to the scale of the plants, but also to the budget of the projects. This has definitely increased. Then we have the scope that CETA can um, provide. So since a few years, we are able to deliver or provide conceptual design as an engineering service. We um, are now seen as a general planner and uh, we are also solution provider for digitalization. And then there is an interesting part. Um, it's our product development. So there is a team at CETA that is developing new products out of customer requests. Um, to fill a certain gap on the market because these things are not existing. So all these things together are the baseline for a very diversified work at Zeta. So uh, for me, Ashton, what's interesting is that you've been able to handle both the technical as well as the people aspects of the business. So managing people, uh, uh, looking at the growth across regions and offices. In terms of the projects, I believe it's also the complexity of the projects that has increased significantly. For Zeta. Can you talk a little bit about the role your team plays uh, in the execution of such projects? Um, well, the process engineer is not only the first one in the project, he's also the link between the customer and our project team. 
So to some extent, the, the process engineer is an interpreter. So he or she needs to understand the customer, listen to the customer, raise the right questions to f uh, find out the what is required and why. And um, we have a very special approach in our team. Um, a process engineer at CETA is doing every step in his project from A to Z. That means um, the process engineer is developing the PNIDs, is doing the dimensioning of the components, is checking the 3D model, is writing the functional specs, and is then finally doing the commissioning. Um, so, and within this chain, actually there are two major issues I would like to highlight. Um, the functional spec topic is something I would say specific at Zeta, because the one who did the design and who defined the process together with the customer is also the one who is writing it down and is not handing over this information to someone else. So we are supported by our automation engineers, but they are not writing the functional specification. It's done by our team, by our process engineers. And the second thing is the commissioning. The commissioning is actually the last package in a project. It's the biggest um, package. And during the commissioning, you can see the results of your work of the last one or two years. And um, handing over a plan that is now working after the commissioning is a very special reward you get. And um, because something you started to invent from scratch is now brought to life. Um, and on the other hand, um, every tiny mistake that you might have done before, during commissioning, latest, you will find it. You have to solve it. But by this, you can also improve. So the process engineer um, is actually guiding uh, all other team members because the commissioning is guiding um, or defining the priorities of the project. Uh, once in terms of design, but also in terms of timeline and priorities. So the process engineer needs to keep the big picture in mind. There's, there's nothing better than a project that runs smoothly and uh, that you plan in advance and whatever you've seen planned actually gets done. Although that doesn't always happen. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges and uh, issues that come up along the way. So can you also talk about some of the challenges during project execution uh, from your department point of view? Mm -hmm. I mean, one um, challenge is definitely linked also to, also to growth um, because there's actually no perfect education that fulfills our requirements. So actually we need to um, train and empower our junior engineers on our own and we need to put the people in the center. Um, the second challenge is definitely linked to commissioning because it is by far the most demanding work package. Um, you have to imagine we have, or you have many different people um, away from home with different experiences, expectations, um, and preferences. They have to solve problems on a daily basis because that's what commissioning means. Um, and all this has to be done under time pressure. So um, to, yeah, life on a construction site is much easier if you are um, a good networker and a strong team player. Uh, you spoke about the time pressure. I think that's also important because we always faced consistently and constantly with, with time pressures on these projects. Mm -hmm. Can you also share your experiences in terms of how you can handle or deal with these challenges? Mm -hmm. Um, what I found out within the last couple of years, our generalist approach, so doing this one project from A to Z is definitely one of our solutions or success factors because um, not only of this improvement effect and lessons learned effect, it's also because you don't have this um, loss of information or handing over information. So you have a consistency and continuity in a project because a project lasts for yeah years sometimes. Um, so this is one approach. Um, the second approach is again linked to growth. So we try to keep a balance between um, the number of seniors that we have because they are taking over the responsibility for the mentoring and the juniors. So this um, needs to fit together. And um, uh, the third part of, of solution, I would say, 
is um, the part that I can cover myself, so it's my own contribution. Um, in general, I try to hand over my own experience, but I also need to make new experiences. So what I do is from time to time, I step into specific projects um, to find out what are new challenges, are there any new requests, do we need any new tools, standards, or maybe job profiles. And um, what I'm doing then is I'm taking these lessons learned with me and I try to hand them over immediately into new projects or to my team leaders. Um, this is much faster than waiting for a project review, then setting up a to-do list um, and writing it down. So we have to do all these, thing all these things, but it takes more time and we need to react faster. And one special thing for me is um, the t Z Zeta team spirit. And um, for me, it's outstanding. And for, for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep, great, yeah. And um, providing the best possible surrounding for my team to really understand their challenges and their needs is, for me personally, the most important part of my team leadership. Yeah, and I think that's a good, also a good definition of leadership because you're providing the right environment for people to, to do their jobs well and you're also helping them solve their problems. And uh, what I take from this is that there's a constant introspection and a thinking and a learning of how we can constantly improve and do things better. And uh, I'd like to understand what is your, um, what are your thoughts on how project implementation can develop in, in the pharmaceutical business? What do you, how do you see this uh, going forward? Um, well, actually, in terms of project execution time, I don't expect any relaxation. Um, it's easy, easily explains customers want to reduce their risks, um, which means they want to order or realize a project as late as possible. Um, the second um, yeah, uh, development or vision that I have is, I think the one-stop shop concept that Zeta can provide now as a general planner um, will be the future because it reduces interfaces for the customer and this means automatically also less resources for the customer. Astrid, you spoke about projects, the challenges there and how we can solve them. And I think from my point of view, one of the metrics of success is when we have repeat business, when we have customers who keep coming back to us. And I've seen this and I find this very impressive within Zeta is how we have customers who want to work with us over the long term. So can you talk a little bit about the benefits for the customer from our approach and our way of handling projects? Mm -hmm. um, what Zeta has proven within the last couple of years is um, that we are driving innovation and that we are highly flexible. And um, so, for example, our um, technological innovations we have our XXL Mac drive or our latest Zeta baby uh, are the stereo connectors. Um, then we have um, the flexibility of adapting project execution concepts. So there are differences in dealing with a hyper fast track project or there are new role uh, models for general planners, these kind of things. But um, also very specific is the flexibility of our management in terms of in investments, for example. Um, five years ago, um, the second workshop um, in, for the fabrication was built just out of a request of one specific customer. So I think this flexibility, um, a highly competent team and our specific Zeta team spirit make the difference between us and yeah, someone else. Um, and that's our success story, I would say. And it also brings us back to the, to the weighing balance in terms of innovation and how do you balance these different aspects of projects. Uh, that was a great answer, Astrid, thank you. So uh, we're coming to the end of the conversation and I'd like to end with one key message that you would want people who are watching this video to take away or to leave with. Mm -hmm. What would that be? Um, my key message, and I truly believe in it, is Zeta, a team that makes the impossible possible. I like that very much. 
Thank you, Astrid, for your time. Would you be open to answering some personal questions as well? Thank you, Sushan, as well. Um, yes, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So, Astrid, we got to know you professionally, and we're curious. We want to get to know you personally. Are you a morning person or a night owl? A night owl. What did you want you to be when you grew up? First, a uh, teacher, and afterwards, a scientist, but actually, Nobel Prize winner. Are you a winter or a summer person? Summer. Who's the person you most admire and why? Actually, it's a type of person, um, visionaries. People who invent something that nobody knew he would need and afterwards everyone wants to get it. Are you using or would you prefer a PC or a Mac? PC. The future is now. What's next? What is your secret vice? <laughs> Royal gossip, I have to confess. Okay. <laughs> If you think about your vacation, are you going to the beach or to the mountains? To the beach. Describe your management style in one word. Empathy. And the last question for you, Astrid. The best book you have ever read. Mm, I would select Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. Okay, great. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you, too. Thank you for your time. That brings us to the end of this conversation with Astrid. We hope you enjoyed it. And we invite you to watch the next interview in our series. Thank you again. Thank you.